is that what, whatever your mind can conceive and you believe you must be able to achieve. And so there's nothing to stop me. When I was getting doors slammed in my face on my bicycle, trying to sell driveway ceiling, I said, I just got to shift it a little bit here, pivot, because these people want this, yeah. but I haven't figured it out yet, right? Yeah. So yeah. don't give up, just keep plugging and enthusiastically acting upon is, is one of the key parts of, of that whole process. Um, man. I want to start, Kevin. Um, everyone's going to know exactly who you are. World famous, one of the original sharks. Over 22 businesses, 21 businesses now that you've taken. One over a hundred million, yeah. 21 businesses that you've taken over a hundred million dollars. You are the guru when it comes to entrepreneurship and I am chasing you with everything I've got. I love it. Um, you always want someone to look up to. Um, but let's start with your first business when you were young. Let's talk about what was your first, give us a crazy story of, of, of business when you were a kid. So uh, I was, uh, I started in my dad's uh, restaurants. My dad actually had, was a bartender and he wanted to be an entrepreneur, saved up enough money to open Harrington's Irish pub. So when I was in there at 11 years old, I started bar backing, dishwashing, serving, all that. But not only that, my dad said, look, anybody can do that. I can pay you by the hour. I want to bring you in the back. I want you to see the numbers. I want to see where, I want you to see the cost of this business, where the income's coming from, the profit in the bar side of the business uh, and food being a little tighter because of the high food costs. And so he taught me how to be an entrepreneur. And then when I turned 15, he said, I think it's time you got to go start a business. And I, 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 I don't, it, I, found out a, a neighbor of mine, not next door, but somebody had been in this black topping business and doing very, very well. And I, and I've, I heard the story of it in, in, in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I grew up. If you had a, a crack in your asphalt driveway and the water got in there and then froze in the winter, tripled the size of the crack. So I would knock on doors, 15 years old, drive on my bicycle. I found out I couldn't drive from door to door because if I'm sitting there with my bike, they're looking at me like, wait a minute, what's going on here? Say, are you the owner of the company? And, you know, so, uh, so I, I drive to the neighborhood, park my bike somewhere, and then I would walk the neighborhood. And, and the, the key thing was this, because the very first time I did this, actually, I, my sister had bought a home and she says, hey, come on out to my neighborhood and, and give it a try because, you know, I, I, I live out here. So I did. And I got 20 people that said, no, no. Some slammed the door. Some said, I'm busy eating and this and that. And then I was so dejected. I'm like, I hadn't made a sale yet, right? So I tell my sister, I said, you know, I think we gotta, I gotta come up with something unique. And I, and I think maybe, because people kept asking, where have you done a, a job that I can go take a look at? I'm gonna do your job for the cost of materials. I said to my sister, my brother-in-law, and it was like 10 bucks, okay? So I said, I'll do your driveway. I put a sign across there, but I'm gonna take a picture before and a picture after. And now I'm gonna go back into the same neighborhood and see how many people I can get. We did over 20 jobs in that neighborhood after I did the first one. So it wow. became a credibility issue because I was you know, 15 years old knocking on someone's door and they're thinking, how good a job can this guy do? But we did an amazing job because I had training and 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 also some of the best product in in the marketplace. So that was really my first kind of entrepreneurial thing, and and I was doing ten driveways a week all summer long. Wow, had a lot of fun. That's awesome. Okay, so you had the spark. I mean, there's two types of people: batteries included and batteries not included. You were completely batteries included. So what, what was it about business in general that made you excited about getting into that world versus doctor or lawyer or accountant or teacher? What, what about business made you want to get into that? So when, when I looked at other uh, professions and I, when I was in grade school, I wanted to be a fireman and that's a great profession, but also it's a question of, are you going to be happy with the finances? Now, you know, I mean, ultimately, people have to decide, do they want to build something and be very, very successful? Um, and along with that comes financial gains, etc. Or do they want to just, you know, be 
happy in their day-to-day -day life and in the community, et cetera. And so for me, I said, I, I want to build something. I want to build something big. I want to build something global. I just, I, I actually was, I, I'm not an inventor. I deal with inventors and I've licensed hundreds of products, but I would actually try to invent stuff around the house because I'm like, I, I know I just had this, you know, like I would wake up with a passion to do something and be productive and solve problems, right? So when when the problem that I solved when I got into the into my next, you know, I, I say my next venture, it wasn't my next one, but because I had I after I after I did the driveway ceiling, that was only a summertime business. I got into college, I needed something full time. So I started, I said, what what what's year round? Well, heating and air conditioning. So I started a, installing furnaces and air conditioning systems. And what I did was I went to the courthouse and I got a list of every real estate transaction in Cincinnati, Ohio, where I was born, cross-referenced it, got their phone numbers. We called them and we said, congratulations on the purchase of your house. We're going to come out and clean your furnace for free and give you a free safety check as a welcome gift for buying your house. And 80% of the people said, when can you get here? And of course, we go out and every single home we went to had a pilot light that would, that would burn 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Of course, we would clean it because that's what we told them we're going to do. But we'd also show them that there was new technology called a spark ignition yep. that sparked when the furnace needed the pilot light to go on. Then the pilot light went on and then the heat went on, saving you 20% on your heating bill. So I had the rights to this back in the 70s and I was selling 15 of these a week while I was a freshman in college. And by the time I got to the end of the first year, I had 25 employees, six trucks going out every single day while I was going to school. That's and awesome. I, I did that for two years until I just couldn't take school anymore. So I, I'm a college dropout, I hate to say, but I had you know the equivalent of a $5 million business my freshman year in college. So wow. I, I loved every bit of it. Yep. I love that. And you said solving problems, right? Solving problems for a profit. I think that what you just touched on is what, I, what we are so uh, interested in teaching kids about, right? Because they go through this assembly style school structure and they're not thinking about solving problems around you, right? Find exactly. a need, fill a need in the community. What can you do to solve a problem? That is how people should be thinking because I think we, kids don't realize in 10 years, half the jobs are going to be made up. They're going to be new industries, new technologies, problems solved by men and women like you and I. And so that's a brilliant thought is find a problem and solve that problem. That's a great that's way to learn. That's how inventors work. They, you know, they walk around the house and look at things they're having trouble with and, and, and solve it and, and, and create the product that I deal with inventors on every level like that. Yeah. And every inventor needs a multiplier, right? And it's, it, yeah. you know, because it's just as hard, I think, to invent something as it is to find the right channel to serve people with the invention or the, or the problem solving, right? Marketing sure. to me is one of the hardest things in the world. And I'm a born marketer. And it's, and it's every day I'm learning about behavior science. I'm learning about what channels to try, throwing spaghetti against the wall to see what sticks. Yeah. What, what are your thoughts yeah. on, on marketing? What are your thoughts on what can people do to kind of learn, okay, I've got a great idea. I've got a cool product. You know, we work with a ton of people that have inventions and new ideas. What's the best way for them to get that out to the world or think about well, getting it out to so, the world? Yeah, I mean, look, there, there's, in, in the old days, because, because I, I, I was, I created this world of as seen on TV and infomercials. And um, the father think, of webinars and infomercials. This is yeah. who you are. Yep. Hey, so, you know, thank you. Um, but it, like I was sitting there watching uh, my cable TV when the cable first came in to my city, Cincinnati. It was 30 channels. I got to channel 30 and nothing was there. It was the Discovery Channel. I called them and they said, oh, Discovery is only an 18 hour a day network because it has a problem. It doesn't have enough money to produce 24 hours a day. So six hours a day is dead airtime. And I said, well, so that's a problem. I said, okay, if I'm the TV station, the cable company, how do I solve that problem? Well, let's get six more hours. 
but it doesn't have to be entertaining program. It could be selling programs that can make money, self liquidates itself. So I didn't want to produce movies or television shows. I wanted to produce shows that sold products and, and provided an income stream for the TV station and for me. So that was a problem solving situation. I got six hours a day on Discovery Channel on a nationwide basis back in the early 80s. Wow. And that created the infomercial industry. Yep. And again, solving a problem in the marketplace. And, and, and then we got more time on more channels and then we went global and we were filling airwaves in Europe, Latin America, Asia, uh, the Middle East, et cetera. So it's, you just never know where it's gonna come from. And so I hope I answered your question. I'm not oh, sure. Oh yeah. And it, it actually, that moves perfectly into thinking like mindset, okay? We gotta talk about this book for a second. Mentor to Millions, this is your newest book. USA Today, number one bestseller, right? You just well, hit- Well, we hit, we hit New York Times, we hit Wall Street Journal, number two. Uh, USA Today was pretty close to that, but okay. I don't, we don't have the last numbers yet, but it, it, it was huge and number one on Amazon in nine categories. I love it. I love it. The Wall Street I, Journal is data. It's it's on how many books are sold. We're number two to Dan Rather, and I feel pretty proud about that. So that is fantastic. I mean, I literally bought hundreds of these things. I'm giving out to our Thank investors, you. our friends. I love the book, not just because I love Mark, but the stories in here are fantastic. And you talk about um, curiosity. You talk about mindset. You talk about have a plan, make an action. I I love the mindset part, and I think what you're touching on is your mindset from very early on was thinking through, finding problems, finding channels. There is, a, there is an answer to a lot of unknown solutions in the world. So tell me about mindset in this book. When you, when you think about how to approach a situation in your life, right. what's the mindset you have to have? So I, 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 a couple of different things. And, and, and Mark, Tim, and I both were fortunate. Uh, you know, I met Mark through a mutual mentor of both of us. Uh, Zig Ziglar. Zig had mentored Mark. Zig had mentored me when he passed away. And I connected with Tom Ziglar and like, hey, Tom, you've got all these amazing assets that Zig created. What's the plan? And, and then he hooked me and Mark up and said, you guys should talk. And then I started mentoring Mark along the way. But I think that Zig had an unbelievable mindset and it was my same mindset and that I learned from him. You can get everything in life you want if you just help enough other people get what they want. And so that was a, a true mindset for me. And, and I think that it, it was also, so, so the concept of not having to always be, you know, getting something out of people, but right. Right. giving back, right? And so I started the entrepreneurs organization. And by the way, we called it the Young Entrepreneurs Organization when we first started it, 1987, Michael Dell, Ted Leonsis, uh, myself, Vern Harnish, handful of guys. We said we want on young entrepreneurs to be able to network with other young entrepreneurs. And, and to this day now, we changed the name to EO along the way because we all got older and we, in the beginning, you had to be under 40, right? Well, <laughs> yeah. You know, now I'm way above that. So we changed, we changed the, uh, uh, the name to entrepreneurs organization. We're in 150 countries, uh, all around the world cities. I mean, you name it from India to China, to Europe, to Latin America. Um, we empower entrepreneurs and this is me giving back to the entrepreneurial community, but I also have one other mindset thing that's important. And this came from Napoleon Hill and, and Think and Grow Rich was one of the, one. it, it was the first book I read that shifted my mind. And, Me too. and, Me too. and, and basically Napoleon's concept, it, I'm going to say it a little bit different than he does, but whatever you vividly imagine, ardently desire, sincerely believe and enthusiastically act upon must inevitably come to pass. And so that that's, I wake up every single morning with that mindset and I have since I was 15 years old because that's what I learned from Napoleon Hill is that whatever your mind can conceive and you believe you must be able to achieve. And so there's nothing to stop me. When I was getting doors slammed in my face, 
on my bicycle trying to sell driveway ceiling. I said, I just got to shift it a little bit here, pivot, because these people want this, yeah. but I haven't figured it out yet, right? Yeah. So yeah. don't give up, just keep plugging and enthusiastically acting upon is, is one of the key parts of, of that whole process. Man, I love that. This exponential thinking and this vivid thinking is so cool. We just had this story. Travis, actually 10 years ago, he helped me launch Apex, the largest school fundraising franchise in America. Now we've served 3 million kids. But I remember vividly, it was literally, we were talking, I think we were having a having dinner at some restaurant in the middle of Dallas somewhere. And we thought, wouldn't it be cool to help a million kids with mm. leadership and fitness and learning these life skills that now we have myfirstsale.com and now this stuff. And we just sat there and we thought that would be unbelievable. And then we thought, well, how do we even get there? And then we literally mm. started thinking, okay, here's what the company looks like with a million customers. Here's what the yeah. company needs to have in terms of leadership, in terms of teams, you know, yeah. we just worked backwards and then we got all the way down to what we're doing tomorrow. And mm. I think it was like 2016 or 2015, we hit our millionth and it was like, boom. And then we hit 2 million within a year. And it was just like, boom, boom, boom. Put a plan together. So you had the vision, then you had the plan, then you had the execution. Um, I don't know how you got it funded if you needed a lot of funding, but that's, an, you know, that oftentimes is something that is a hurdle that entrepreneurs run into. And, and so that's we, why- We had schools, yeah. we had schools pay us a thousand bucks to book their spot. So we ended up getting our first 50 grand in booking fees and that helped nice. us build the site and everything else. Now with, with Happy, with the biotech company, um, we raised eight and a half million dollars and now we're you know doing our IPO here pretty quick. It's going to be a ton of fun, but that's really? more of a hardware oh. investment growth, right? That's fantastic. Nice. You know, my, my thing is just find something you're passionate about that solves a huge need and go after it just like Napoleon, Napoleon Hill, enthusiastically with a clear vision and it's bound to happen. I love that. Exactly. Yes. That I wake every morning. I, I, I feel, you know, like ready to rumble, ready to go. Yep. <laughs> and, and I got to ask you this too, because we have a ton of, you know, entrepreneurs and their families that listen, biohackers, people who love to hack their mind. You do not look your age, sir. How old are you? You got to tell us. Uh, I just had a birthday last week and I, I turned 64. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> well, happy birthday. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Some days I feel 64, but uh, thanks for saying I don't look 64. But okay, today I feel great. You know, I you know you get little uh, little little tweaks and arthritis here and there, but I'm I'm good. I work out. I eat right. I don't drink. I'm just you know I I, I said years ago I want to live a long life. And mm -hmm. it's when my father when he was 90, I sat down with him and he's like Kevin. He said if I'd have known I was going to live this long. I'd have started taking care of myself a lot better, a lot sooner, okay? Because <laughs> yeah. his last few years weren't so good, but he lived till he was 93. So I got some good genes, and I just believe that, you, you, you know, you're, you're given a, a, a body, and you should take care of it. And the longer you're going to be around, the, the more important that is, for sure. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, that's so thank, thanks for the compliment, though. I oh, yeah, it. and it comes back to mindset, right? I mean, I'm 34. Yeah. My dad's 64, same as you. Yeah. And I love that type of thinking is you, you get one body, start early and think you're going to live a long time, right? We do this, oh, yeah. we do this exercise in strategic coach with Dan Sullivan. He's one of my, yeah. my closest mentors. He, the He's first thing, the that. first Dan's thing amazing. we do is how old are you going to live? You literally write down a death age. Hmm. And then he says, what if the day before you died, you were doing exactly what you wanted. You were healthy as an ox. You were in your passion. You were in your unique ability. You had enough cash confidence to make it for the next 50 years. You think you'd die the next day? No, there's no, no. way. So right. what, we did, what we did is the lifetime extender principle. I like that. Everybody said, you know what? Maybe I'm not going to die at 80 like my dad or my grandpa or my uncle or my, whatever they think in their minds. Maybe I'm going to live to 100, 130, 140, right? Dave Asprey says he's going to live to 180, I think, is his number. Oh, wow. Yeah. But, that, but Dave's a good guy. Too. I love Dave. He's one of our main advisors for, for Happy, and he's been oh, phenomenal great. in this thinking. And he says, you know, you have to think long term about your life, right? The two, mm -hmm. the two professions that die the fastest after retiring are doctors and insurance actuaries. 
And it's because mm. they live their whole life calculating death. Oh, and they, wow. they think that when am I going to die? Oh, it's based on that stat here because of this age right. and demographic. And that, that's funny. A, a good friend of mine's an actor and I'm, he's probably <laughs> figured it out. And when he gets to that year, he's going to be, you know, starting to feel not so good. Right. Cause yeah. he's conditioned it in his mind. That's, that's, that's right. crazy. And, and how many people out there think the same way because their relative or parent died the same time. Right. Right. Yeah. Like un, uncharted territory. It must be biological. I'm not going to make it. So, I, you know, when you said, how long are you going to live? I, I automatically thought, you know, my dad lived till he was 93. So I should be able to live till longer than that, you know? Right. So, you know, so I'm, 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 I'm going to go uh, very, about, let, let, hey, I don't know about 180, but uh, let, let's go north of 100, right? <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to implant your brain in some blood boy to get, yeah. to get to that level. But uh, I hope Dave makes it. That'd be fantastic. And I think you, I think yeah. we can. But, it, but again, it's mindset, right? The funny right. joke that Dan Sullivan tells is, hey, I might be wrong. His goal is 156 is Dan's goal. He's like, I may be wrong, but the day after I die, who cares? Like it's, <laughs> it's all how you think about it, right? Right. And so, yeah, exactly. you know, so the, th the, same is the same principle is true in anything in your life, whether it's your family, whether it's your business, whether it's your health, whether it's your, your mind, your mentality, your spiritual life. So I love that, man. This, that's like the best topic I feel like you could be teaching everybody about today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I had, I had one it. more yeah. big thing for you um, about family, okay? Right. Tell us about your being a crazy, okay, I'm saying crazy because I'm one too. Being a crazy I'm, entrepreneur, I don't- It's a positive thing. <laughs> yeah, that's right. My, I don't have a, you know, I don't have a, I don't have a clock. I just, I think right. and I go and I do the things I love and I solve the problems I see. How do you raise a family in that type of an environment? Everyone listening to this is almost all of our entrepreneurs are busy, hard charging families. Yeah. What's your advice? Well, it is a little challenging. I mean, I'm one of six kids myself, Cincinnati, Ohio, my dad, mom, we all eight of us lived in one home and it had two bathrooms. I said the six of us had one bathroom and my parents had the other and we fought like crazy to see who got in there first in the morning and all that good stuff. But, you know, it's my dad as an entrepreneur, he was in the restaurant business and it was, it was a tough business. It took him away quite a bit because he, he was open till two in the morning and they opened at 11 o'clock for lunch. So he, he would get home at 3 a.m. and then leave at 10 a.m. to go, you know, and literally work that, that whole shift for many, many years. So I, I would see him on a daily basis, but he wasn't there for, for dinners and, and obviously worked so hard that sometimes by the weekends, he was, it was tough. So I realized I want to do something different. And yeah. so um, like, yes, I have for in, in, in my, I have two boys now, one, they're, they're both grown and out of the house, but 32 and 22. And I, and I think that um, I, as, as I grew up as an entrepreneur, uh, my father ended up retiring from the restaurant business. And I said, Hey dad, why don't you come to work in my business? So my dad worked for me for like 15 years. And, and then I brought my brother into the business and then uh, my brother had children and one of his kids joined him. My two boys are in the business now. And so I, you know, uh, as an entrepreneur, I believe that if the family is, it, you know, it, it can be part of it. And this was Mark Tim discovered this. He incorporated his right. family. And so um, for me, it was, it, I never went to that formality, but my father, me, my brothers, my, my, my kids, my nephews and nieces were all in the business. Right. And so I, 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 I like to have um, many of the, of, of the family members be able to participate along the way. And, and so, um, so it's important though, that you also have separate time that is non-business. And I, I, I do a, a lot of just, you know, like I have, I keep my life by a calendar and I count like this, you know, I, I'm, I'm probably going to go see the world series and, you know, and, and, and go, go travel a little bit. And earlier this week I was in Chicago playing golf at one of the greatest golf courses in America, Medina golf course in Chicago. And three weeks ago I was at whistling Straits. So I get to do my private things that I like to do, but then I also have the exact same things that I do with the family. And so um, I'm, th this weekend, I'll take my wife along for the, tr for the trip. So, you know, it, it's cool. important 
that the family is, is, is part of what you're doing because if they feel alienated, it's not going to work. You're going to build the business all into yourself and not have a happy home life. So yeah. um, I, it's important to, 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 to be transparent with all of that and, and make sure that you, you put reins around it to the best that you can. Because I know, Scott, you're a crazy entrepreneur like I am. So sometimes it gets tough, right? Oh, it, yeah. you're, you're at a dinner and a, a very important call comes through and you're not supposed to take it. You know, what do you do? Well, maybe you get back to them later then, right? So right. It, it's challenging, right. but family is what it's all about. And, that, and, and that's why I learned the hard way with not having some of the best partners in the world that having family was the one way to make sure that it all came together in a very powerful fashion. Yeah. Oh, I love that. And I, I remember, you know, my first business was in third grade making bead geckos and little keychains and things like that. I grew up in, in this world, four generations of entrepreneurs. My grandpa was Reagan's bank chair. And, you know, we mm. just have this men- mindset from a young age that you're going to, you know, your money is going to have its place. It's not, it's not the idol. It's a tool. You know, you're going to learn profit. You're going to learn grit. You're going to learn delayed gratification. That's, you know, this is why we mentor thousands of kid entrepreneurs because all their families want the exact same thing you just said. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I I love what the program you're doing. It's it because kids too, too often, like my dad, he did mentor me and he said, Kevin, I want to show you the operating side of this business, the financial side. And I want you to be ready to get started in a business. Very few people have a father like that though. Right. right? right. I mean, they're, they're busy. If they're running corporate this or that, they're not, you know, telling their kids what to do and how to do it in business all the time like that. And so I was a lucky guy. And I think that's maybe one of the reasons why I've ended up being very entrepreneurial and, and, and as you say, crazy entrepreneurial. Okay. Yep. It's a life sentence. You might as well enjoy it. I do. Thank I'm you. unemployable, I think is the synonym for entrepreneur. So that's right. Exactly. All right. Well, we don't have much time. I know you're busy and uh, we really we're honored that you're here with us today. Any last advice to the, you know, the families out there that are listening in on this, whether they're entrepreneurial, they're, they're hard charging. Yeah. What do you got for them? I, get, I, I say this because I, I, I run through airports and, and people hate, they'll stop me. Hey, you're that guy from Shark Tank. I've got just one question. I'm a young entrepreneur. How can I be successful? What is there any guarantee? And I said, no, there's no guarantee, but l- let me tell you what I learned early on. And, and it, it involves mentoring because I said, I, I was growing a business and I needed capital. And people say, oh, we'll go to the bank and get lines of credit and get some, you know, get some loans. And I did. And five banks told me, no, 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 no. And so I thought, well, but I got this great business. It's profitable. Why can't I get money? Because there was no security. So I ran into a banker that had retired. He was the former bank president of one of the biggest banks in my city. And, and, I, and I got talking to him, telling him about my business and the problems I was having. And he said, I'm going to do something that I, I don't know if it's anyone who's ever done this, but I'm going to mentor you. I'm going to get you a bank line. I know how he says, one of the guys that turned you down, I'm going to get him to give you the money because I know how to talk to bankers That's and awesome. you don't. So we got a $3 million line of credit and we built, we 10 X the size of the company. So I say, you need mentors. You need a dream team and one may not be enough. And so uh, as, as I built my businesses, I, I've surrounded myself with smart people. Now I didn't do this in the very beginning and it cost me because I was, as a young entrepreneur, I thought every dime I pay out is less than I get. No, you need a good support team. You need a good CFO. You need good operations people. Yep. And I'm not saying go hire five full-time employees and all the profits are gone. You can get some of these people for free mentors. You know, they, a lot of mentors are doing it because they're giving back to the entrepreneurial community. They're giving back to the youth out there. So yep. if, if you're a young entrepreneur, if you're starting a business, don't go it alone. And I think this is why, Scott, they tune into you and they, you know, you, you mentor these people. And then maybe like, I don't, do, do you teach all aspects? Do you teach digital marketing and all of that kind of stuff? Oh, so, yeah. so they need someone like you. And for those that have you, they're lucky. For those that don't, 
they need someone like you or like me in their life to be able to guide them along the way. At least in the beginning, you don't need you don't need someone forever holding your hand every step of the way. But you, you've, in the beginning, I say it's most important because you can learn along the way from those mistakes that the mentors have made. And one last thing that I want to say is that always begin with the end in mind. So you're building a business. What's the goal? Oh, well, some people say, I just want to build it. Well, do you want to sell it? Do you want to cash out? Do you want to take chips off the table? If so, there's things you need to do along the way. And one of them is just making sure that you've got people that have had exits and no valuations and things like that. So um, begin with the end in mind and, uh, and get, a, get, a, get a good dream team around you and you're going to be have a, a much better chance of big, big success. Yeah, that's well said. I, I cannot... I can't even put a dollar amount to just to me personally, not to mention my network and my family and friends to what mentorship truly means. I can't tell you how many people in my life took me starting young and just said, here's, here are the mistakes I've made that were costly financially, family wise, and what have you. And I have been able to learn vicariously through them. And I cannot put a price tag on that. It's I, I'm so th I look at my wife. I look at my three kids that are young. I look at our network. I look at the, you know, six businesses. I look at my life and I, and I Im immediately think of the 42 people now that have literally taken me from A to B to C to D on my hero's journey. Yeah. And Amazing. everybody needs that. Everybody needs that. I, I can track mentors to billions of dollars of yep. sales that have happened for me. So yep. it's, it was definitely worth it. And you know, the, the guy that brought me that first $3 million line of credit, he said, I'm doing, I'm not charging you anything. He says, now after it's done, maybe we'll sit down and talk if you want to do business with me. But I, I love mentoring. I love being a mentor. I love having mentors. And, um, and I just want to thank you for having me today. It's been really cool to connect. And I, for the, the young ones out there that are listening, the old ones out there that are listening, um, I hope uh, you picked up a few tips from our, our conversation today, but definitely Get, get some good advisors and board of advisors and, and uh, some good folks around you and help you build that dream team. Yep. And that's, that's the book, Mentor to Millions, Kevin Harrington and Mark Tim. Make sure if you're listening to this, grab two at least copies, give one to a mentor in your life today, and then read the other one yourself. You can see that in our show notes. We'll give you guys a link directly to buy. And Kevin, we thank you so much for this. It's been a fantastic day. Great to thanks be here. For, thank you, thanks Scott. Us. Thanks guys. Good seeing you. Keep doing what you're doing. It's really impressive. I love love what you're doing, and maybe there's maybe there's a way for me to help some of the young entrepreneurs that uh, that, that you're dealing with there too.